Hello, this lecture is on the English-French rivalry in North America in the 17th and 18th century. The English-French rivalry that played out in European wars over the centuries continued in North America. For most of the 17th century, the English focused on their American colonies while the French slowly advanced settlement on the St. Lawrence River. An expanding fur trade for both the French and the English, however, led to military conflict on the continent. Years after the efforts of Martin Frobisher and John Davis, the English did, did make another attempt at finding the Northwest Passage. But Henry Hudson's expedition in 1610 ended <clears throat> when his crew mutinied and left Hudson and his son and seven others to die in the frozen North. Decades passed before the English became serious about the North. In 1670, King Charles II granted a royal charter to a group of wealthy London merchants. Five years earlier, Pierre Esprit Radisson and Mader Schauer de Grosilier, who had both upset Quebec leaders with their unlicensed fur traders, switched sides and went to England to sell their fur trade plan to bypass the French, the St. Lawrence River, and reach the interior fur producing region by a northern route. The idea found support in England. A 1670 monopoly established the Hudson's Bay Company, <clears throat> which was given the right of trade and commerce over a region named after Prince Rupert. <clears throat> Rupert's land consisted of the territory of rivers that flowed into Hudson and James Bay. It was a vast area. The company, which was located on Hudson Bay, was directed by men in London who had limited understanding of the fur trade. The company's employees stationed on the Hudson Bay were unlike the French, who had established close relations with native peoples. Earlier French leaders like Samuel Champ de Champlain had encouraged the intermarriage of French men and native women, something frowned upon by the English. Another difference was the issue of Christian outreach. English elites, although tied to the Church of England, gave little attention to the evangelism of natives, unlike the French, who pursued the Christianization of natives. With no accountability to priests for their behavior, the English were more apt than the French to supply alcohol to natives. In addition to lacking close relations with natives, the employees of the Hudson Bay Company did not possess the survival skills of natives and the French courier de bois. The English did not paddle inland to trade for furs. The English system was to wait for the natives to bring them the furs. The French had been involved in the fur trade in Canada for many decades, but they had yet to push into the prairies. Their farthest reach was just west of Lake Superior. From the few historical sources available, it appears that Henry Kelsey of the Hudson Bay Company was the first European to see the interior of Western Canada during a 1690 trip. With a group of Indian guides, he traveled from York Factory to the Paw in Manitoba and then set foot perhaps as far as the Red Deer River. Kelsey was unique in the Hudson Bay Company. He spoke Cree and got along with his native hosts. 
The French exploration deep into the prairies occurred over 40 years later when Pierre Gaultier de Varennes, Sir de la Vrande, led an expedition along the St. Lawrence Great Lakes trade route to the forks of the Saskatchewan River. He was attempting to find the Mer Louis that led to the Pacific Ocean. Although there was no inland sea, Le Verandre did strengthen the French position by establishing a series of trading posts in the region. Both the French and the English were vying for power on the east side of the continent. Whereas New France was experiencing slow but steady growth throughout the 17th century, the English were increasing their population at a fast pace. There was agriculture expansion in New France in the second half of the 17th century, but the French government's notion of a compact colony was not working. Beaver and other animal pelts accounted for about 90% of the exports of New France. In other words, the expansion of the fur trade was much more significant than any other economic developments in New France. The 1670s and 1680s witnessed the most dramatic territorial expansion of the fur trade in New France's history. In the beginning, the French and English colonists had little direct contact with each other. French military engagements were south and west of New France with the natives who had allied with the English. The Iroquois saw the French as a threat to their fur trade endeavors. They launched attacks on French settlers, including the destruction of the village of Lachine in 1689. To the west, the Iroquois attacked Illinois tribes allied with the French. There was no direct French-English confrontation. By the 1680s, however, conflict between the two European powers over the fur trade seemed inevitable. As a result of the Hudson's Bay Company, the English were in the north they were also in the southeast with their fur trade ventures in the New York interior. Consequently, the French feared an English pincer movement. The French made significant gains in the interior west of the Appalachians, notably in 1682 when French explorers and fur traders claimed the Mississippi region naming it Louisiana. The French construction of a string of fur trade posts as far west as Lake Superior and beyond was also worrisome for the English. There was a giant crescent of French influence that contained the English on the east coast and maintained alliances with Indians. Conflict between the English and the French was just around the corner. In response to the Iroquois attack on Lachine, the French initiated surprise raids on English settlements. Men, women, and children were scalped. This small war in North America ended in 1697, only to start up again in 1701 when France went to war with England. The War of the Spanish Succession, also known as Queen Anne's War, took place from 1701 to 1713. Most of the skirmishes in North America involved small numbers, but in 1711, the English gathered approximately 10,000 troops to invade New France. Fortune. Fortunate for the French, bad weather stopped the English at the mouth of the St. Lawrence. The naval disaster resulted in the drowning over, of over 800 soldiers. Two years later, the Treaty of Utrecht ended hostilities 
yet not without a price. French Canadians had not lost any major battles, but the holdings in North America were sacrificed to men for French losses in Europe. Particularly insulting was the loss of Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, and French territory in the Hudson Bay region. On the coast, the French did keep Cape Breton Island and Prince Edward Island. The French were certainly at a disadvantage with New France and their Eastern possessions having a much smaller population than the English colonies. The English were 20 times larger than the French. Lacking significant economic development on the St. Lawrence, the French economy was weaker. There was agriculture land in the St. Lawrence River Valley, but much of it was sandy and required back-breaking work to clear the forest. One estimate is that a French farmer needed a whole year to clear one acre of land. It took years before a farm could provide a cash surplus. New France had nothing comparable to the area of arable land of the American colonies. All was not bleak for the French. There were several notable advantages for the French Canadians. The French had a united political structure rather than an assortment of disconnected American colonies. The differences between a northern and southern colony were significant. Geographically, the Appalachian mountain range offered some security for New France, as did the French's familiarity with important rivers. Also, Due to ice, there was a shorter period for any naval attack in the St. Lawrence River Valley. Militarily, French Canadians were expert in guerrilla warfare and advantage for battles on the rivers and in the forest. One advantage that was evident time and again was the support that native allies gave the French. Although the French were involved in a war against the Fox Nation in today's Illinois era, area, they experienced peaceful years after the Treaty of Utrecht of 1713. This period represented an era when the French worked on their military fortifications, such as the building of Louisbourg on Cape Breton Island. Of course, peace did not last. War broke out in Europe between England and France, and there were raids in Acadia. The most serious battle was the English and American assault on Louisbourg in 1745. The English outnumbered the French 10 to 1, and the fort was low in munitions. France had sent cannonballs that were the wrong size. Worse yet, was poor morale among the French. In December of 1744, there had been a mutiny when the soldiers turned on the officers. They demanded justice in the form of monetary compensation for material losses to cheating officers. No blood was lost because the local authorities gave in to the insurgents' demands. The mutiny was unique in that it occurred during wartime and that it had almost unanimous support among the soldiers. In this context, it took seven weeks of bombardment for Lewisburg to fall. With Lewisburg in ruins, the door was open for the English to attack New France. The French were spared, however, in the short term. Domestic distractions sidetracked England. In 1746, France attempted to reclaim Louisbourg with a force of 7,000, but failed to do so. What they failed to do by force, they were able to achieve by treaty. Peace treaty negotiations in 1748 gave Louisbourg back to the French. Another consequence was the English establishing their own naval and military base 
at a harbor named Chibuktuk by local Indians, today known as Halifax. In the 1750s, military conflict resumed in the Ohio country. The French wanted to maintain control of the Ohio River region because it offered a natural highway to the West. Possession of Ohio was essential for control of the fur trade and the maintenance of good relations with Indian allies. In 1754, Governor Marquis de Chaine sent 800 troops into the Ohio Valley where they destroyed an American post under construction. At the site, the French built Fort de Chaine site of today's Pittsburgh. Although the Americans responded under the command of George Washington, they lost a battle to the French and their Indian allies. The British sent Major General Edward Brad Braddock to North America with the instructions to attack the French at Acadia, Lake Champlain, Fort Niagara, and Fort Duchesne. War had yet to be declared officially, but the conflict in North America was drawing France and England into war. To conclude, the growing rivalry between the English and the French led to war. Up until the year 1755, New France and the French position in North America was intact. However, the next chapter would not be a victorious one for the French. Thank you.